Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Government has finally made known its remedy for dealing with a long-standing impasse over the signing of power purchase agreements for renewables projects procured in 2015. Terence Creamer joins me now to discuss the proposal and its likelihood of success. Welcome Terence. Hi sir. How exactly did this log jam arise? Well, it really goes back to the end of 2015 when these projects were procured legally by the Department of Energy through the IPP office, which is a joint venture between the DOE and the National Treasury. And they selected these projects as they have been doing over a series of bid windows. And it's been a very successful program, the Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Procurement Program. It's been lauded all over the world. It's a, a reverse auction type process where people bid into the project put uh, in for an allocation and the lowest prices generally prevail and we've seen this model being adopted uh, generally uh, more and more around the world. In the old days of renewables there would be feed-in tariffs and there was quite a slow uh, decline in tariffs over that period of, of feed-in tariffs but with these auctions that have come in we've seen an acceleration in the reduction of the, the costs or the prices or tariffs bid by these renewables companies specifically for onshore wind and for solar photovoltaic. So we've seen a massive decline in s around the world over the last uh, five, five years and in South Africa as well. A big decline in the solar fo photovoltaic prices have come down by over 70%, wind by over 50%. So it's been a very successful program and one that's been lauded. And, uh, in uh, but what happened is that at that point, due to a really a, a decline in demand and some recovery in the Eskom's uh, energy availability uh, factor. We've seen a return to surplus in South Africa and uh, a, a, at that time a fairly assertive leadership under Brian Molefe and later Mochela Coco decided that they were not going to sign additional power purchase agreements uh, that were procured by the DOE and the National Treasury. Uh, until they had guidance from, the, from government because they had returned to surplus and they were looking for markets themselves for the electricity. So that's how this log jam uh, arose. Initially, we saw that uh, there was a concentrated solar power project which was procured in bid window 3.5. So that was even before that uh, end of 2015 bid window. Um, that th uh, suddenly there was a pullback on the, there was supposed to be a signing ceremony uh, some uh, the, the journalists were on the way to that signing ceremony when it was cancelled and then since then uh, it's just been a, a period of uncertainty around what we're going to do with uh, the, the signing of these power purchase agreements. And what is the energy minister proposing to address the problem? Well, minister Kubai came up after consultations that have been going on un, uh, uh, since May this year between the National Treasury the Department of Energy and the Department of Public Enterprises, which is Eskom shareholder ministry, as well as Eskom, she made a proposal on the 1st of September that uh, to clear this backlog, they are only going to look at the bid windows 3.5 and uh, bid window 4. Now, 4 is a complicated bid window because it's not just one round. There was an initial bid window 4, then there was an extension to that 4, which some people call 4B, and then there was an expedited round. Now, 4 let's say 4A and 4B were announced as procured projects, 26 of them, uh, 25 of them. And then in addition, bid window 3.5, the concentrated soda power, uh, the minister said those will now be procured. But there had also been uh, sh uh, uh, preferred bidders announced for what, uh, what is called the Smalls program, which is for projects below five megawatts. Those were not announced uh, by on, on the 1st of September and uh, remain in limbo. So these 26 projects, which fall under a bid window 4 and 3.5, are now meant to be signed on the 28th of October between Eskom and the 26 uh, RPPs, or 26 projects, um, because some of them, um, the RPP is the same developer, so it depends. It's about 2,500 megawatts of, uh, of capacity, so not massive. And obviously these will be built once signed and needs to go to financial closure, they'll be built over a period of a couple of years. So they should enter into the system around 2020, 2021, which is kind of when Eskom says the surplus is going to start being eroded. But that's very unclear because the demand outlook has been so much weaker 
uh, or the demand has been so much weaker than the outlook initially or, or, uh, for that demand. So it will be interesting to see how long the surplus is sustained in South Africa. But uh, be that as it may, basically the minister said by 28th of October she wants all of these projects signed. However, she, there was a sting in the tail and a, quite a serious one in the sense that she said all of these projects would only be considered if they could meet a, a price cap or below a price cap of 77 cents a kilowatt hour. Now, it's, we don't know exactly what was bid in terms of the bid window four, but we know, for instance, the concentrated solar power project, the CSP project, will never meet that price cap. We've never in the world had a project meet that price cap in a, in, with that technology. But for the wind and solar projects, um, it's, po it's possible that the 77 cents could be met, but it's not certain because over the period of um, uh, time that is, you know, the, the intervening period of time since the end of 2015, you know, uh, bid quotations specifically for grid, grid connection from Eskom have escalated quite significantly for quite a number of these projects. Uh, we don't know what contractor prices have done, you know, so the guys that will actually physically build. We don't know what certain supplier, uh, other supplier inputs uh, prices have done, cables and uh, inverters, etc. Um, and while we do know that the panel prices internationally uh, for soda have come down and the wooden turbines prices have been generally trending down, although probably the turbines bid <laughs> and even the panels bid uh, but most like the turbines don't necessarily exist anymore. So you'd have to go back to the supply and say, look, we wanted this generation of turbine. We know you don't make that anymore, but can what sort of price will you give us on the new? So there's a lot of uh, pencil sharpening and, and uh, calculation that has to happen over the, uh, the next month or so before, before the signing. And it's not 100% sure or definite that every project can, can meet that 77 cents threshold that's been set. And in fact, uh, it, it raises a whole uh, new level of uncertainty around the, the REAP program, which to date has been quite successful because it's what was also announced is that there's, there's going to be no further bid windows uh, other than these 4, four and 3.5 that will be signed uh, until South Africa's finalised its integrated resource plan, which uh, looks like it may be finalised by February next year. So all in all, do you think the minister's solution is workable? Well, it it's adds a whole layer of risk that didn't exist uh, before because the REAP program, as I said, has been successful. While there have been time delays, that we've never had this sort of post-facto intervention or retrospective intervention on the economics of projects. So it now it, you know, it creates a whole level of policy uncertainty that we've never had before where the government can intervene after a legal formal process where bids have been made, bids have been accepted by the, by the IPP office and now we have a, re a renegotiation or reopening of, ne of uh, tariff negotiations. So definitely it, it creates a whole level of uncertainty that we've never seen. And obviously it's going to, people are going to watch it not just in the energy space but anyone that's involved in um, you know, in supplying infrastructure or infrastructure services to, so to the government, whatever that might be, you know, um, because we are talking about more and more private sector participation in the infrastructure sector, are going to be watching this carefully because, you know, if you get a long-term concession, whether it's rail, whether it's electricity, whether it's roads or toll roads or whatever it is, you want certainty that the, the, the sort of the regulator or the procurer isn't going to come back a few months later and say, sorry, we need to reopen. So it doesn't only create risk for the REAP program, it creates risk for the REAP program, for all further RPP programs, um, as well as other infrastructure sectors. So it's quite serious what's, what's taken place. And, uh, it's, you know, I think there is a, uh, there's been a lot of patience from the renewable energy guys. Um, and uh, whether they are at the point where, you know, they're prepared to um, remain in the sort of negotiated settlement type phase, which seemed to be the initial indication, rather than taking this legal. Um, that's also going to be interesting to see. Um, I think the next few weeks and months are going to be important. I think the engagement with the, with the minister is going to be important. She said that she's going to be meeting with all RPPs prior to the signing. And uh, if uh, there's some give and take or some sort of flexibility, I think we will see signings happening on the 28th of October. If it's an inflexible type arrangement, 
I think there's a possibility that some of the IPPs might say this is a bridge too far and we're going to go find uh, out what the courts have to say about this. Thank you, Terence. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.